In today's video, we're going to go over two very interesting topics. That's buoyancy and Archimedes principle. Before you start it, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Please support our channel, Step by Step Science. Please subscribe, click the notification bell, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. And in addition, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials that is available to you at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. Check it out. The link is in the description below. And what is buoyancy? Buoyancy is simply the upward force exerted by a fluid. It could be a liquid or it could be a gas. Those are both fluids. And that opposes the weight of an object that is partially or fully submerged in that fluid. The weight, the gravity acts down and the buoyant force acts in the opposite, which is in the upward direction. And this is because the pressure at the bottom of an object that is fully submerged is greater than the pressure at the top of that object that is fully submerged in that liquid. And this pressure difference results in a net upward force. And that upward force is called the buoyant force. And the buoyant force is also equal to the weight of the fluid that is displaced by that object. And that is what we call Archimedes principle, or what is known as Archimedes principle, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And don't forget, this is also interesting. This means that objects that are submerged in a fluid weigh less than they do when they are outside of that fluid. So you put an object in water, if it sinks, it'll weigh less than when it's outside of the water. Fascinating. Okay, no, conceptually, let's just look at buoyancy here. We have an object like a ball and it floats. We have an object that sinks like a pair of metal scissors and we have an object we place right in the middle and it stays right there. We call that neutrally buoyant. It doesn't sink or float. In each case, those three objects have a force of gravity. Gravity acts downwards. When something floats though, there's a buoyant force and the buoyant force is greater than the gravity force, the gravitational force. If the object sinks, that means that the buoyant force is less than the gravitational force, or gravity is greater than the buoyant force. And if it's neutrally buoyant, then those two forces, gravity and buoyancy, are equal to each other. But in both cases, excuse me, in all three cases, there is gravity and a buoyant force. Now, we are going to drive the equation for the buoyancy force. And don't forget that the buoyancy force occurs because there pressure increases at the depth within a fluid. So here we have an object, a rectangular object. It has, the, the surfaces have an area. The force at the bottom is greater than the force at the top due to this difference in height. The height of the top is at H1 and the height of the bottom is at H2. And you can see H2 is greater than H1. And that means that the buoyant force is equal to the force at the bottom minus the force at the top. Now, from the pressure equation, which we know pressure is equal to the force per unit of area, we can rearrange that equation and we can say that the force is equal to the pressure times the area. Now, the pressure at a depth in a liquid is given by this equation. The pressure is equal to the density of the fluid times g times height. And the height is really the distance below the surface, okay? That's what we mean by the height. Now, this equation we derived, or I showed you how to derive that equation in a previous video, which you can link to in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But this is the equation for the pressure at the depth in a fluid. Okay, now I'm going to substitute this term into this equation. So that tells us that the force is equal to the density of the fluid times G times H times the area. Now, I'm going to substitute this term into F2 and F1 in this equation. And that tells us that the buoyant force is simply equal to the density of the fluid times G times H2 times the area minus, again, the density of the fluid G H1 times the area. Now, in these two terms, the density of the fluid G and area are all the same. The only difference between these two equations is one is at H2 and one is at H1. And those heights are not the same because you can see their difference over here in this equation, in this diagram. But I can factor out the density G and the area from both of those. And then I get that the buoyant force is simply equal to the density of the fluid. Okay, I want to point out it's the density of the fluid, not the density of the object, times G times A. Okay, which is the area of the object, excuse me, the area of that surface, times 
uh, H2 minus H1. H2 minus H1 is simply the change in the height. So now we have the buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid times G times the area times the change in the height. And the area of that surface times its height, the area times the height is simply the volume. So this is the equation that we can use to calculate the buoyant force. The buoyant force on that object is the density of the fluid, not the density of the object, times G times the volume of the object. Okay, now in this case, it's a rectangular object. It doesn't have to be a rectangular object. It could be round or some irregular shape. We just have to know what its volume is. But this is the equation that we can use, or one of the equations that we can use to calculate the buoyant force. Now, we can go on and take that a step further and talk about Archimedes' principle. Now, this is the equation we had from the previous page. Buoyant force is density of fluid times G times the volume of the object. Well, if the object is fully submerged, then the volume of water that is displaced by the object is equal to the volume of the object. So we could actually rewrite this equation. It's kind of the same thing, but it's kind of different. The buoyant force is equal to density of fluid times G times, here we had the volume of the object. Well, if the object is submerged in water, then that's the volume of the fluid. So this is another equation. If we know the volume of the fluid, this is the same as the volume of the object. But you can see here, look, we have the density of the fluid and the volume of the fluid. Now remember, density is mass divided by volume. That means that the mass is equal to the density times the volume. So you can see we have the density times the volume, that's equal to the mass. So now we have this equation for the mass is equal to the density times the volume, and this is for the, all of the fluid. We can substitute that in for the density and the volume, and you can see that the buoyant force is now equal to G times the mass of the fluid. And the mass of the fluid times G is simply the weight of the fluid. So this is another equation that we can use, and this is Archimedes' principle that we can use to calculate the buoyant force. The buoyant force is simply the weight of the, uh, of the, excuse me, of the fluid that is displaced. So the buoyant force on an object is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. That's Archimedes' principle. If the object is fully submerged, it's the volume of the object. If the object is floating, then it's the volume or the part of the object that is under the water. Okay? Isn't that fascinating how we went from one of those, from the previous equation, from this equation to this? Simply because when it's, when it's submerged, the volume of the uh, object is the same as the volume of the fluid. Amazing. Okay, now let's go on and do a little example. Show you how that works out. Now here we have a giant metal ducky has this mass. There it is on the bottom of the ocean. And we want to know, this is, well this is its volume, 30,000 cubic centimeters. We want to know how much force is needed to lift it up to the surface. Well you might say, oh well here's the mass, we'll just multiply that by 8, by 9.81, and we would get the weight of the object, and that's how much force we have to apply to lift it. Well, that would be true if it was outside the water, but it's inside the water, and the water exerts a buoyant force. Even though the ducky is at the bottom, there's still a buoyant force because there's a difference in height, and a difference in pressure, and a difference in force, because the ducky has some height. All right, so now to calculate, though, there's the ship that's going to come in, it's going to lift, and we have the buoyant force, and we have to calculate the buoyant force first. So the buoyant force... Well, we don't have to calculate it first, but we're, we're going to calculate it first. The buoyant force is the density of the fluid times G times the volume of the object, we'll say. Okay, now this is the density of, it says ocean, so the salt water. It's not 1,000. It's 1,026 kilograms per meter cube. And then the G is 9.81. And then the volume of the ducky. Now, the volume of the ducky is given in centimeters cubed, but you can see we have all these meters here. we got to convert to meters. So how do we do that? 30,000 centimeters cubed. One cubic meter is a million cubic centimeters, so we can use that our conversion factor. And then we get that the ducky has a volume of 0 0.03 meters cubed. We put that in there, and we get that the buoyant force is 302 newtons. That results in the fact that the ducky has some height, and the pressure and the force is different on the bottom. It's greater on the bottom than it is at the top. And that gives us a net upward force, which we call the buoyant force. Okay, now that's not the end of the story because the ducky does weigh something when it's outside of the water. We got to figure out how much it weighs. We got to subtract those two because the force to lift it up is equal to the weight 
This is the weight, the force of gravity, minus the buoyant force, right? So it's sinking, it's sunk, so therefore we know gravity is greater than the buoyant force. Now figure out how much the ducky would weigh outside of the water when we, we'd say there is no buoyant force, okay? Uh, then we would take 80 times 9.81 and then minus the buoyant force, and we get that the force needed to lift the ducky out of the water is 483 newtons, okay? Now, you might think, oh, maybe that would, the buoyant force would decrease maybe as it gets closer to the surface. It does not. The buoyant force is constant because there's always the same change in the height, difference in the height. It doesn't matter where the ducky is, if it's near the surface or it's all the way at the bottom or somewhere in between. The buoyant force is always going to be the same because the change in the height is always the same. Okay, there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. We did a bunch of stuff. I showed you how I went over the definitions for the buoyancy. I showed you how to derive the equation for the buoyant force and how we can use that to use that to get the equation for Archimedes principle. And we did a fascinating example with the giant metal ducky. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you found the video help helpful. If you did, please do all of the following things. Please subscribe. Please click the notifications bell. Please leave a nice positive comment. And please don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.